didn't even have to pray yet. All of you were praying though. Awesome. And so for those of you who are here, whether you are joining us online or in person, welcome. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we are here because of you, the word made flesh. We give you praise for dwelling among us. And as we tell the story again tonight, may we dream with you. May we be those who dream your dreams for your creation. In your name we pray. Good evening, friends and family. Hear these words from Luke 2, verses 1 through 7. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in the Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Can you hear us now? Yay! Everybody blink, ring, uh, turn your lights on for a second. <laughs> okay, there you go. Thank you. Okay. Good evening, everyone. We're reading from the Christ Candle Lighting. I think it's page two on the, the notes that were handed out to you. And uh, I'll be reader number one. Bev will be reader number two. And then there's a place for all. And we'll go back and forth through this reading together. And it's nice to be here with you. So, as we begin, I invite you to join me as we get ready to light the Christ candle in our Advent wreath. The candles of hope, of peace, of joy, and love are already lit. Tonight we light the Christ candle and make room in our hearts to dream. In the beginning, God dreamed of a beautiful world, spoke it into being, and said, It is good. Enslaved in Egypt, the Israelites dreamed of freedom. And let's read this together. In the wilderness and in exile, 
The people dreamed of safety. In Jerusalem, the people dreamed of a Messiah. And in Bethlehem, the shepherds and wise men dreamed of a new beginning. Then, then Jesus, Jesus walked this, this earth, and dreams came true. The sick were healed. And the poor were fed. The forgotten and ignored were seen. The sinners were embraced and forgiven. Everyone was invited to God's table, and the world has never been the same. And to tonight, we, we are, are those who dream. Tonight, we dream the dreams of our ancestors in faith before us. Tonight, we dream of God who draws near out of unfailing love. Tonight, Tonight we, we dream, dream with God, who, who seeks to restore, restore redeem, and, and renew all of creation. creation. May this candle be a reminder that there will be a day when every good dream will be fulfilled as Jesus returns. Until then, we will be those who dream. Let's pray. Almighty God, make room in our hearts to dream with you. As you have drawn near to us in Jesus' birth, help us draw near to you now. May we dream to see and hope to believe in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, good evening, church family. Since the, the PowerPoint is not working, we encourage you uh, to just go into your, your packs and take out the song sheets as we sing O Little Town of Bethlehem. Abide with us, 
cluster of our keiki up here coming up to the nativity scene. What you may not have noticed was that they were carrying the baby Jesus. And so we continue the story now from Luke chapter 2, beginning in verse 7. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloth and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to all on whom his favor rests. Let's sing, O Holy Night. Shut 
to Luke chapter 2 verses 15 through 20 we continue our story when the angels had left them and gone into heaven the shepherds said to one another let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that happened which the Lord has told us about so they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger when they had seen him they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherd said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So here, friends, we find ourselves on this beautiful Christmas Eve. And I, wanna, I have a question for you. What did you expect? I'm reminded of a Christmas many years ago when I was about seven or eight years old. It was the first Christmas in our new home. My younger sister and I could barely sleep the night before. She was about four years old and we were so excited, but somehow we must have drifted off to sleep because I remember waking up in the morning and running to the living room. Now, growing up as missionaries in the Philippines, our family didn't have a Christmas tree. But this year, there were little piles of brightly wrapped presents on a table. This surpassed 
my wildest expectations. My aunt had sent us a box of toys from the US that my parents had saved and wrapped to give to us at Christmas. We were in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of the jungle, and here were these bright, shiny toys. Brilliant new books with their beautiful colored titles, furry little animal figurines and a little wooden house for them, and new rubber slippers. That Christmas morning exceeded my expectations. Have you noticed that when something exceeds your expectations, it tends to be good? Whether it's getting a grade in school that exceeded your expectations, you expected a C and got a B, or whether it's maybe eating a meal that turned out to be way better than you expected. It's wonderful when our expectations are not just met, but exceeded. And when you and I look back on the year 2020, if we took a moment to pause, I have to say, I don't think that any of us would say that it met our expectations or that it exceeded our expectations. I remember back in January of this year reading about what was happening in Wuhan and sharing here in our Wellspring messages stories about how Christians in that city were caring for each other and their neighbors in the lockdown. And then before we knew it, it wasn't just a faraway story in the news, but the tidal wave hit us too. All of our 2020 visions for what the year would be like, for what our futures be, would be like, for what we expected, all washed away. Some of you have had your own individual tidal wave sweep over you this past year. This year might not be what you expected. Even this evening might not have been what you expected. And in this moment, in this sacred moment, I'd like to invite you to take a few moments and look back at the year. Here in the presence of the Christ child, I want you to ask yourself, what was I expecting? What are some of the losses I've experienced this year? So we're gonna take a moment to name them right here in the presence of God and each other, I want you to bring to mind your expectations that have not been met, those losses that have been too weighty to even name. Let's take some time right now. This year is not what we expected. And yet here we are, connecting with God and each other. You and I can have strength today to name these losses, to mourn and grieve, to name what expectations have not been met. We can have strength to do that in this moment because tonight, near the Christ child, we are those who dream. Yes, indeed. Tonight, we are those who dream. In recent weeks, sometimes I have wondered why, I've wondered why the Christmas season has to be so chaotic. Why does it have to be so rushed, so disruptive to my state of mind? I don't like it when things are this frantic. And maybe that's why it's soothing to hear songs that mention treetops glistening, and children listening, and this notion that from now on your troubles will be far away. Now, I don't want to be a Grinch, but the more I have pondered my own longing to have myself a Merry Little Christmas, the more I'm struck by this contrast of what it was like for Mary and for Joseph on that first Christmas night. Did Mary and Joseph mix and mingle with the jingling feet? Was baby Jesus born into a place where everyone was dancing merrily in the new old-fashioned way? The Gospel of Luke chapter 2 paints a different picture of that holy night, the night of our dear Savior's birth. Imagine the scene for a minute. Ponder with me the scenario. 
Here we have a newly engaged couple entering an unfamiliar town under tremendous physical and emotional strain in the shadow of an unplanned pregnancy. And as Mary's body starts going into labor, she does not have a roof over her head. Despite this emergency, there is no vacancy for them anywhere. Without a place to stay, they have to settle for the most humble of accommodations, a stable, barely suitable for human habitation. What was going through their minds? Talk about frantic. How could these surroundings be the royal birthplace for the Son of God? The one who the angel said would be given the throne of his ancestor, King David. How could a manger be appropriate for a monarch whose kingdom will never end? And if Jesus is born into a borrowed feeding trough, our notions of status and success need revisiting. Of all the ways Jesus could have entered our world, he did it in this particular way, without real estate, without security guards, without a red carpet. But why? I think he did it so that if you've ever been evicted from your home, Jesus can relate to you. If you were born into a difficult situation or have ever had to run from violence just to stay alive, Jesus can relate to you. If you've ever been perceived as a threat to the status quo, Jesus can relate to you. If you know the pain of rejection, injustice, or betrayal, then you have something in common with the Son of God. And what about Mary? The short answer to the question posed by the popular Christmas song, Mary Did You Know, is that yes, Mary did know. She was not clueless or naive. Even when the angel showed up in her blue-collar hometown of Nazareth to drop the news that would change history, Mary's only question was not if it could happen, but how. Her song in Luke chapter 1, known as the Magnificat, shows us not only that she knew she was carrying the Messiah in her womb, but also that her choice to join God's dream for the world was worth the risk because God would provide for her. Mary treasured God's dream and was committed to keeping that dream alive, even in the face of hardship and danger. And it's because Mary knew that this miraculous truth was alive inside her own body that we now know about Jesus, Yeshua, Yesu, our living hope. And like any loving mother would, Mary did everything in her power to give her child the best chance of fulfilling his potential. She believed in him before anyone else did. And so tonight we can believe because of what Mary believed. And like Mary and Joseph together, we too can welcome with wonder and holy imagination the word made flesh who comes to us in the vulnerability of a child. We can hold our expectations with open hands because tonight we are those who dream. It's not always what you expect. It wasn't what they expected. Yet on that night in the stinky, lowly manger, Jesus was born. God in the flesh showing up right where nobody expected. And God is here too, even in the most unexpected of circumstances. We can be Christ's love to one another, to give as well as to receive, because tonight we are those who dream. Yesterday was my mom's birthday. She would have been 89 years old. 
but she passed away when she was a very young 60 years old. And 28 years after her passing, my heart still aches as if she had passed just yesterday. Year to year on birthdays or anniversaries of her passing, I have ups and downs depending upon a lot of factors from year to year. And I remember the first year of her passing and I wondered if she was really okay. I knew she was with Jesus, but still I wondered. A couple of months after she passed, I had a dream, vivid as reality. One of the few dreams that is etched in my memory. My mom stood on a beautiful bridge dressed in a sharp white suit because she was quite fashionable. I could not go onto the bridge to reach her, but she stood looking at me, smiling and waving. And as she turned to cross over the bridge, she walked up some stairs to a big airplane that was waiting for her. And as she got to the top of the stairs, she turned and looked back at me once again, beaming and waved to me before turning to enter the plane where the doors closed and the plane departed. That dream, why it was so special for me, was because my mom had spent 40 years of her life working for a major airline, for Japan Airlines. And so that was a really big part of her life and many memories that we had traveling together as a family. That dream helped ease so many of the questions that I had and I believe was God's response to the ache in my heart that needed consoling and comfort at the time. This evening's candlelight service may not be what we are traditionally used to. Talk about wildest expectations. Yet while some may see us having to do without or having been disrupted quite a bit in our lives, what is important is that we are still coming together to reflect and celebrate Jesus' coming into this world in the flesh. This year, while it may be different, the way in which we gather does not diminish God's presence in and around you. In fact, tonight, as we dream outdoors, under the stars and this beautiful night sky, finding simpler ways to be together responsibly during this time, God is present all around just as he has been since over 2,000 plus years ago as Jesus came to light the way. There would be many expectations that would feel unmet. There would be many exceeded. This night we reflect and celebrate the Christ child's birthday and proclaim the good news prophesied and fulfilled. For a child has been born for us a son given to us, authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. This little baby named Jesus came to save the world, to rescue you and me, to transform us, and to love us like no other would or could. From year to year, one of the traditions of our candlelight service has been to invite everyone to come forward to light a candle. The lighting of the candle is symbolic as you sit in God's presence, bringing your deepest longings and aches and remembrances to him. Perhaps there is a loved one that is no longer here with you and their absence is an immeasurable loss. Perhaps there is a person with whom your relationship has fallen apart or away and you desire forgiveness and healing for your relationship. Perhaps you are in a solemn space just because this year has been a struggle with unmet hopes and dreams. God invites you to bring those to him. In a moment, I will be praying and inviting you 
from wherever you are to quietly give God the weight of those feelings and circumstances that you are walking in now. Each of you tonight, when you arrived and you uh, were giving candles, you also received a little bell, a jingle bell with a red ribbon on it. And if you could take those out now, if you could find those, it's all of a sudden gotten really dark. <laughs> And so I hope you can find those in your car. It's just a, a little gold bell. And hopefully you each have one. So as I pray and invite you to quietly give God the weight of feelings and circumstances that you are walking in now, hold that bell. It will be quiet. And while it makes some of us uncomfortable, I encourage you to savor the quiet and the stillness and just be present in the presence of the Holy Spirit, fully releasing to him whatever you are carrying. So you have the jingle bell, and after you have lifted your prayer to the Lord, simply begin to ring the bell. And just keep ringing it. And while we cannot come forward to light a candle on the logs that we usually have in the front of the stage, these bells symbolize a third way of bringing the gift of openness, vulnerability, and presence with Jesus. So let's pray. Jesus, you are here. You came and you continue to be with us. We invite your Holy Spirit to whisper and dream with us. We receive you, Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Because tonight, we are those who dream. Amen.
Thank you, Katie. That was beautiful. How far is it to Bethlehem? Not very far. Bethlehem is right here where you and I are. As God the Christ child comes to live in each one of us, to be born anew in us, whether it's us taking the first steps towards God or the first steps in a while, we know that the Christ child is not far. And now we are reminded of the truth that there is a light that shines in the darkness that no darkness can ever put out. You may have received some candles in your car kit. You might have some electric ones for the cakey. But Pastor Dan has lit his candle with the Christ candle. And in a few minutes, we're going to sing Silent Night together. If you want to roll down the window to your car, we'll be coming around car to car to light your light. If you wish to participate from um, hands-free, then keep your windows up. And when you're ready, as we're singing Silent Night, just turn your little car light on the inside. That works too. But here, friends, we are reminded that Christ child is here and has come. He is the light that nothing, nothing, nothing can put out. Let's sing.
hopefully you all have your candles lit, those who wanted to participate with the actual fire, but if you have the electric version, that's fine too. Before we close our service, just want to thank you all for being here and let you know that uh, the wonderful volunteers who have put so much effort into this, we want to thank them and we appreciate them and let's make sure that we follow the parking volunteers guidelines as we leave. It'll take a little bit of time, but just to make sure everybody is safe as we exit, just wait for the guidance of those who are in your area to guide you safely through to the exit. Now let me close with a word of blessing from the same place where we began, John chapter 1. John chapter 1 verse 14 says, The Word became flesh and lived among us. We have seen His glory, the glory as of a Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. And so as you extinguish your candles, go in peace, following the God of grace and the God of truth revealed in the Word made flesh, Jesus Christ. May His grace and truth be embodied in all of us together as His people. And may we proclaim our dear Savior's birth in a way that points back to the ultimate giver of grace and truth, God, our Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace and have a Merry Christmas.